In this video, I'll be running through why funnel marketing is dead. By traditional funnel marketing, what I'm referring to is top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel approaches across social networks, particularly when it comes to Facebook and Instagram ads, but this also cross translates into Pinterest and TikTok. Now there's three key reasons as to why traditional funnel marketing no longer works across these platforms and why you should not be using it as a concept for how you're going to move forward and structure your campaigns. In this video, we'll slowly touch on each story. Number one is iOS 14 has caused really poor event match rates across the board. Now, what do I actually mean by that? Well, with iOS 14 and all the other recent privacy updates across all of the platforms, it's caused on-site match rates to become really poor. And an example of this is I challenge you to go into your Facebook ad account right now and have a look at the add to cart column. Have a look at how many ad to carts are getting attributed to your campaigns and cross reference that against the back end of Shopify or whatever website platform you're currently using. What you'll notice is that the ad to cart to purchase ratio is significantly higher on Facebook. It'll be ridiculously high, probably 10 X higher, if not two to three X higher. The primary reason for that is because meta is attribution modeling to essentially make up for who they believe may have added to cart. Because Meta is not doing a good job at, anymore at being able to track people on site and being able to push those events back to Facebook, they simply guess who's doing it based on how high intent the user is based on your pixel data. So for example, if your perfect customer is a 32 year old male who lives in Melbourne and is interested in dogs, then if that particular user clicks on an ad, Facebook's going to go, okay, that's pretty much the exact target demographic. He probably added to cart. Let's attribute an add to cart to him. So what that ultimately results in is incredibly inaccurate targeting. If you're going to hyper segment down at the bottom of your uh, marketing funnel, and you're going to go down to add to carts, reach checkouts, page visits, 25% top page view times, it's going to be really inaccurate because all of those on-page events are either not going to be accurately tracking users or are going to is simply going to be fake attribution modeling of users that didn't even take those events on site. Number two is traffic campaigns simply don't work. Now in traditional top of funnel campaigns, you would normally run that as a traffic campaign to generate the most amount of traffic possible. You'll then retarget those users in the middle of funnel and then you'll target purchase intent users in the bottom of funnel. Traffic campaigns do not work. We've never seen them work. I have never seen a conclusive piece of evidence that shows that an effective traffic campaign strategy actually yields results at a more profitable efficiency than direct conversion based campaigns. And the reason why traffic campaigns don't work just to linger here for two seconds is because how Google segments users at the conversion action level. And we can think about this very, very logically and it makes sense from a business point of view from Facebook. From Facebook's point of view, who is the most valuable user to the company? The most valuable user is someone that buys, someone that purchases through ads. And the reason why they're so valuable is because advertisers want those people. Advertisers are going to be willing to pay a lot of money to get someone that's willing to buy their product onto their website. Who's not valuable? Someone that clicks and doesn't buy. Who's not valuable? Someone that views ads but doesn't buy. Who's also not valuable? Uh, someone that likes comments on ads, but doesn't buy. There is a slight, slight amount of value on those users, but it's, it's not that big. It's not that valuable. Advertisers aren't going to spend on Facebook ultimately if they're not buying from the brand and driving a direct ROI. And so what Facebook does is those users that have high purchase intent are likely to buy from an ad. They put a CPM premium on them. So it's much more expensive to run a conversion based campaign than it is to run a traffic campaign because people that convert are much more valuable to you than people that simply click. And because of that, the second a user is on Facebook and shows any degree of purchase intent, that's clicking on an ad and adding to cart. That's clicking on an ad and staying on the website for 10 minutes. That's clicking on an ad and buying, reaching checkout. Any of those events are taken place and Facebook suddenly deems the user as high purchase intent, they get pulled out of the traffic campaign objective and they get put in conversions. No one can target that user anymore unless they're optimizing for conversions because they are a high intent user. 
They're high purchase intent user, they're valuable. So Facebook is gonna gatekeep them behind a very high CPM. They're gonna charge advertisers a lot to be able to target that user because they know they're valuable. So when you run traffic campaigns, you're targeting users that have never showed purchase intent on the platform. These are really low quality users. The users that, yes, love to click on ads, but they've never demonstrated any degree of purchase intent through an ad. And you're now under the belief that we can drive a bunch of these users to site and then suddenly make them willing to start buying from brands on Facebook, even though in the last five years they haven't. It's really, really difficult strategy. It ultimately just doesn't work. And I strongly recommend against running it. The only way that this would work is if you have a really incredibly dialed in, absolutely perfect value proposition that's going to take these really poor quality users and somehow spin them into buying off you, even though they've bought off no one else off the platform. You're essentially running uphill when you could be just coasting downhill running a conversion campaign. And number three is hyper-segmented bottom of funnel campaigns leads to very high CPMs. The reason for this is that a key variable, if not the number one variable that Facebook uses in uh, determining CPMs is the size of the audience that you're targeting. So if you go to Facebook and you say, hey, I wanna target this list of 100 people who added to cart on my website, Facebook's gonna go, okay, a list of 100 people, that must be an incredibly valuable list to you. We're gonna charge you $50 per thousand impressions to target that list. We're gonna charge you a lot because we know they're valuable. They're gonna convert. You're gonna get a return. So you're gonna spend on the platform. Vice versa, if you come to Facebook and you say, hey, I wanna target the entire world, global. I wanna target any single person on the planet. Facebook's going to immediately go, okay, well, they're not gonna make any money doing that. That's way too broad. There's no way they're gonna get a return here. And so we're going to decrease their CPM substantially so they pay a lot less so that hopefully they continue spending, they break even, they maybe make a sale or two so that they continue spending with the platform, they continue having faith and we continue uh, getting revenue off of them. This applies most specifically to custom audiences. When it comes to interests, when it comes to global targeting, it gets very, very nuanced and confusing because Interest-based targeting CPMs are also determined by the buying power of the data that Facebook has. Might be interesting to you, but for example, if you target the wine interest, you're not targeting people that have demonstrated interest in wine on Facebook. You are targeting those users, but Facebook also goes and buys third-party data off Google, off Bing, off uh, Alibaba. There's all of these other large tech brands that sell their consumer data to each other and they charge a premium, and then that premium goes onto the interest. So with wine, uh, Facebook might have gone and bought a few million dollars worth of customer data from a bunch of big wine retailers and distributors. They've then pushed that into the system. They've pushed all the email addresses. They've pushed the phone numbers. They've matched them up to relevant profiles. And now the wine interest, instead of charging you $9, is charging you $15 because there's a slight premium that's been put there to compensate for the purchase data that Facebook had to do to enable better targeting within that interest. Just a little side note. Um, but with custom audiences, this is highly relevant. With custom audiences, how small the audience is, CPMs go up. Um, so if you want to go down to, for example, the add to cart level, let's not target just anyone that visited site. Let's target people that added to cart and people that visited site and then people that purchased. And let's give them all slightly different messaging to push them down that funnel. Fantastic. Sounds great in theory. In practice, it does not work. And because to segment down to add to carts, you're gonna pay two to three X more from a CPM perspective. Okay, all well and good. But what that now means is that our messaging has to be at least two to three X more compelling than the messaging that we're pushing to website visitors for it to pay off. If we're not converting at two to three X higher with our add to cart messaging and our add to cart ads and our add to cart targeting, there's no point in doing it. And it's very, very rare that you'll ever be able to curate messaging to add to cart or very bottom of funnel users that is so much more compelling than website visitor ads that it'll pay for itself. It almost never will. I've never seen it. Um, the only reason you would want to do that is if you wanted granular control over data segmentation. So you wanted to see exactly how many people converted who already added to cart and exactly how many people converted that only visited websites, but only visited your website. But 
even that level of segmentation of data is irrelevant because of reason number one, the match rates are so poor. So you could segment, you could pay that CPM premium. You could argue that, yeah, we want to pay that premium because we want access to that very granular level of data, but the data won't be accurate. In fact, it'll be very inaccurate. So there isn't even a point in that. So just to recap, the reason why funnel marketing is dead is number one, iOS 14 has caused really poor match rates on site as well as all of the other privacy policies that other big tech platforms are rolling out. And so any kind of segmentation of custom audiences just doesn't work that well anymore. Number two, traffic campaigns being the top of funnel section. It just, they don't work. They simply don't work and I've never seen any data to conclude that they do. And number three, hyper-segmented bottom of funnel approaches will always lead to high CPMs. And so that completely destroys that middle of funnel, bottom of funnel typical approach where you'll go website visitors in middle of funnel and then bottom of funnel, you'll go hyper-specific audiences. Don't do the bottom of funnel at all because it simply won't work due to how high CPMs are due to the poor match rates. So what's the solution here? The solution is just run a cold targeting campaign that's conversion-based. We can look at that as the top of funnel cold targeting, new customer acquisition, and then just run one retargeting campaign. 90 to 100 day website visitors, retargeting based ads, objection handling, there's using some visited site they didn't buy, why didn't they buy, directly handle that within your messaging and your creative, and that will significantly outperform any kind of top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel strategy that you might currently be running.